I don't know many guys that can do one-arm push-ups, never mind a three, five, or ten-second one-arm push-up. And I'm talking about all ages. Yeah. So. Well, I'm only 23, and uh, myself, you know, yeah, I, I probably need to get into the gym, too, a little bit. I, you know, I'm not saying I'm one of those people that let, let your body go, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, back in the day or, or you know, growing up, you know, or, you know, more skinnier, of course, back then, you know, and, you know, more energetic. Not that I'm not energetic now, but, you know, I don't know, you know. Maybe we need somebody like you to come over here to see Fairbairn and have, like, a training session or whatnot. Get some of these overweight well, people. <laughs> even by being overweight, is I've got kids. i got a kid right now. Here's, here's where the spectrum goes from people who are doing YRG. If you go to DiamondDallasPage.com and look up some of the case studies. You took my buddy Smokey, who's 270 pounds. Yeah, yeah. You know, six foot, I mean, excuse me, five foot nine, never worked out a day in his life, set a goal for himself using my, how did you apply SmackDown, you know? Yeah. Um, and he set a goal for himself, he lose 50 pounds in 14 months, because he was 14 months from 50. Yeah. Well, seven months, three weeks into it, he lost 73 pounds and 58 inches. He's a different guy, but he's not just skinnier, he's stronger, he's yeah. healthier, he's more focused. Because that's one of the things about, I just got back from Iraq where I did a tour of greeting the guys and taking pictures and yeah. getting the pictures with the world title belt, which I have, the world championship yeah. belt, um, world championship title. Yeah. I screw it up. Um, but not just that, every night I did a workout with the guys. Yeah. And every night I had 30 to 80 guys in the gymnasium yeah. doing YRG with DDP. <laughs> and I stayed with them, worked out with them for an hour, then we stayed afterwards, told some stories, took some more pictures, had some push-up, 10-second push-up contest for T-shirts. It was phenomenal. I was there for two weeks. Uh -huh. um, so the bottom line is, what I'm doing is I'm spreading the word and building, you know, the word of YRG uh, as a brand of a workout. You don't have to go to the gym. By the time you get in your car, Drive to the gym, <laughs> go do the gym, yeah. do your workout, puddle around, get in your car, drive home. You just spend two, two and a half hours. Yeah. Well, fine. I've got like this warm up workout. This will start to get you stretched out. You'll be able to find out if you buy the if you go to Sam's on December second and you get the uh, YRG. Uh, excuse me. If you get the Own Your Life yeah. uh, uh, audio book, inspirational audio book, you'll get a twenty minute warm up of YRG, and you'll get to see you know, all the back-end stuff, you know, and you're going you're gonna to sweat your butt off for 20 minutes, okay, <laughs> but if you really get it and you get to go to diamondhousepage.com and you get the, you know, the the, uh, the the whole three, which is, you know, the 20 minutes, the warm-up, the, you know, the, uh, the fat burner plus, uh, these workouts are killer, but there's also people who are 50 plus, like Smokey could not do the regular guy workout. So I developed YRG 50 plus, 50 years, 50 plus years, 50 yeah. plus pounds. And then, of course, there's a the pound of youth. I mean, which none of your listeners are a pound of youth people, which is 56, <laughs> 70. Yeah. So bottom line is, man, I'm just recreating. I'm constantly reinventing Diamond Dallas Page, which is another one of the 10 principles. Well, that's cool. I mean, that, I, uh, after this weekend, after you confirmed and, uh, your PR guy confirmed that it was okay to do this interview with you. I went, to, uh, I, I looked you up on that, or on MySpace.com or found some videos on here, obviously, and uh, I, I see the uh, testimonial of the uh, Larry or Smokey uh, his, uh, testimonial, and I thought that was pretty damn impressive, you know. Yeah, it is. It's very impressive, and he's, you know, it's a just show. I mean, I always say I'm a regular guy, but people say, "Man, come on, you're a three-time world champion. Yeah. You're a regular guy." But I am a regular guy. I was yeah. just like everybody else saying, you know what? I'm going to go do this. And yeah. failure is not an option. What? And like I say, I apply my 10 principles yeah. that I always have. That's why coming out here to Hollywood, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, you know, you, know you, you, you trapped lightning in a bottle the first time. The odds of you doing that twice are going to be astronomical. Yeah. And I was like, I think you're wrong. <laughs> and because I know how I did it. Yeah. So, you know, long story short is, you know, if you do understand what the principles are to owning your, then, you know, at least some of your goals are absolutely possible. Really, anything's possible yeah. if you were to, you know, follow it and just never let it go. <laughs> you that, know, that, some people have limitations, yeah. but 
in the big picture, you, your only limitations are yourself. Now, let me ask you this question now, <clears throat> before we move on to another subject here. Uh, when you do your YRG works out, do you ever listen to any music at all while you do it to pump you up at all, or what's your style on that? For me, I, like, I, I know the workout inside and out, so yeah. I don't have to listen to anybody. I've always got either country or rock or, you know, party music. I've always got something going. Okay. If I'm by myself, if I'm teaching somebody, I'll just put it on low so I have some, like, low-bed music in the background, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, um, you know, is really, uh, um, you know, it's, I, I enjoy that, but I don't need the music. Okay. You know? What I'm going to do now, too, also, is once people get it, I want to put that audio books. Yeah. I mean, not audio books, but audio like that, iPod. So you yeah. Can, once you know the workout, then you can just get taken through it, put your own music on the back of it if you want that, but then you'll know the exercises. Some yeah. people need that little, I think you being a trainer. I've got people all over the country doing this thing. It's really amazing. Yeah. And I'm doing it at the grassroots. I'm about to do an infomercial on it and uh, and blow it up. Things are going to change the world. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. Well, that takes care of the YRG portion of the interview, and I, uh, you know, and uh, now the next, uh, you know, because I said I had a lot of questions regarding wrestling, YRG movies, and a lot of stuff. Uh, now this this goes back to well, not so so long ago, but uh, about maybe a month or so ago, uh, because I am a big still today a wrestling fan. I've been a wrestling fan for about 16 years, and uh, I've never been to a live event yet, but it's only you know because you know where I'm at, it's kind of hard to get you know somewhere sometimes. But anyway. Uh, I was going to mention about uh, Eric Bischoff. Now, I know you probably have answered many que- or this question before, but I'm going to ask you because I've never asked this. He uh, it just came out with a book, Controversy mm-hmm. Creates Cash, and uh, he did like a four-part interview with JBL uh, on WWE.com, and I, I listened very carefully to that interview, uh, and he mentioned, and I know you uh, said a little feedback on your MySpace page uh, about the fact that you and Eric Bischoff were like best friends. Like when WCW, uh, before it went under, you know, when WCW was still up and running, and he would have like you, Eric Bischoff would have you or Kevin Nash or whatever, or somebody come in and uh, do more of the uh, creative control, so to speak. He said that uh, maybe I'm saying this wrong, but from what I got, I mean, anyway, he said that uh, he could trust you more than he could trust himself. Now, do you want to explain somewhat what he meant by that, or, you know? I don't think he actually said that. Or, or something like that, anyway. You know, what the bottom line is, he, he, was, he was talking about my character. Okay. And JBL, you know, he, he, his, his, his character, meaning his one on television, yeah. was, is someone who is, 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 is a bit of a jerk-off. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's just why that's what he plays. Okay. But in, you know, in real life, he also likes to stir the pot. Yeah. So we tried to you know, create some controversy with me and Eric. And Eric basically said, you have to understand, there's, you know, there's people who are loyal, and then there's people that I trust. Yeah. I mean, I trust them. And what he said is he trusted me with his life. Yeah, that's he, what I kind of meant, yeah. Yeah, me, no, he meant that, you know, Eric and I had a relationship that, first of all, that's who I am. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy, if I tell you I'm going to be there on Sunday, I'm there. If I tell you, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to drive 400 miles to get there, or I'm going to be in wherever I'm going to be, unless you change it, I'm the kind of guy you can count on to be there yeah. 200%. And that's what he meant, not just not just count on, but trust with his family. And that's like the greatest compliment anybody could ever give somebody. So... You know, um, that's all Eric was basically so, saying. So you can basically say that you guys are like brothers in a way, kind of. We were for a long time there. We were lived right near the club, but we started at bottom guys together. Yeah. We, we, we were nobodies. Yeah. Bada bing. Bada boom. Bada. Yeah!